Welcome back friends, Ironclad here with a Star Sector mod review. In this video, we'll be answering the question, who are Scalar Tech Solutions, or the Spindle Protectorate, or the Scholar Tech Defense Force, or just Spindle? Okay, yeah, we'll get to that in a few minutes. This mod features a faction in high-tech style, pretty white spaceships, ridiculous carrier technology, lots of pew-pew fun, a comfortable little system at the edge of the core, and the most fun of all, a corporate democracy. Consider subscribing to the channel and supporting scholar tech development now strap yourselves in because here we go Scholar Tech Solutions Faction Mod is being produced by Nia Tall. Not that chubby Choco Lava Vacuum. We're talking about Tall, the incredibly charismatic Star Sector modder, who when asked if I could do a review of one of their mods, responded with unparalleled enthusiasm. Scholar Tech Solutions was first posted to the Fractal Softworks forum on July 18th, 2020. It's a small faction mod that came about by accident. How does that happen? Like, oops, I accidentally... a whole Star Sector faction. Turns out, yes, that's exactly what happened. While experimenting with concept art for a tournament boss, the filament was born. The filament looked cool, and so, accidentally, a whole Star Sector faction mod. Looks cool. I ain't gotta explain shit. And that works for me. The motley development crew of Scholar Tech include Tartiflette for good advice and big brain ideas, Dark Revenant for script wizardry, Mesotronic for music, and Missile AI. This guy does a lot of Star Sector stuff, which we'll talk about later. Sir Hartley for artwork and stuff, TB Disciple for the Chinese translation, and of course the lovely Star Sector Discord for bug-related activities. So where are Scholar Tech in the sector? Let's answer that question first, as their lore is very much tied tied to their star system. Scholar Tech Solutions can be found in the Spindle system, located just to the southeast of the Naraka system, quite close to Hegemony Space, in very close proximity of Diablo Avionics if you play with them, which you should be. Just a single system? Yes. Scholar Tech is not a large faction, which makes the planets they do control that much more important. Of the three populated spheres in the Spindle system, Scholar Tech is in control of two of them. Sharka is the capital planet of the Spindle system and is where the STDF headquarters and Scholar Tech High Command is based. Chakard is a gas giant that supplies the Spindle Protectorate with many of its industrial needs. Both Sharka and Chakard have some rather unusual anomalies, which we'll talk about in a minute. There's one additional populated planet in the system by the name of Ardor. Ardor is under control of pirates, but ultimately ultimately is not a significant threat to the Spindle Protectorate. While the pirate presence could be removed, it hasn't been deemed necessary as Spindle High Command has other priorities. And to understand the Spindle Protectorate priorities, we'll need to understand the company's history. Yes, that's right the company. The previously small company of Scholar Tech Solutions specialized in advanced transport and drive technologies, or to put it simply, high-tech logistics. A few years prior to the collapse, Scholar Tech branched out into the military sector for profitable opportunities. The new military models were promising, but with the collapse, actually that made everything better for the company. <laughs> Scholar Tech basically said, I'm Batman, ramped up warship production, and established the Scholar Tech Defense Force. The planetary government of Charka, being an independent world and having no idea what was going on after the gates went dead, said, okay. So while closer to a vigilante militia than a real army at that point, the STDF managed to keep the spindle system safe in the cycles following the collapse. Now the, uh, historical archives get a little questionable here, so I'll be doing my best to interpret. <clears throat> Since Scholar Tech didn't die a hero, they instead lived long enough to become a state corporation, taking over government functions within the spindle system. The role of CEO now in elected position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not exactly well versed in these sort of things, but I think that's what they call a hostile takeover. Adopting a position of neutrality, superficially following old domain regulations. Yup, we're corporate Sweden. 
Let's clarify this timeline while we're at it. In the beginning, in a land before time, in a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago, there was ScholarTech Solutions. Then, the Collapse. Then, the STDF. Then, the Spindle Protectorate. And then, there was me. Trying to make a mod review of ScholarTech Solutions and wondering why this strange Spindle faction showed up when I thought I just downloaded the ScholarTech Solutions faction mod. Now, with your eyeballs, you understand my understanding of the understandable confusion that is now understood. And it gets better. ScholarTech, in their infinite wisdom, wanted to build their own gate to core domain space. What could possibly go wrong? The failed gate experiment, as they call it, had catastrophic effects on the spindle system, and Tacharka, the closest planet to the gate, especially so. The failed gate experiment ravaged the surface of Charka, killing many, rendering large tracts of land infertile, and leaving the atmosphere forever irradiated. Despite the irradiation, Charka remains the capital garden world of the spindle system. This might explain the other things that happen here. One thing that's not explained by the gate experiment is the anomaly of Jacquard. Basically, Many, many cycles ago, pre-colonization and all that, two planets collided. Jacquard now hosts the massive remains of these planets in orbit, effectively giant floating continents. These continents are rich in ores, and due to their orbitable nature, are relatively easy to mine. So, that's to explain anyways why the local gas giant is also an industrial powerhouse, relatively speaking. Life in the spindle system isn't easy, and maintaining their ongoing existence in the sector is a difficult one, since they are a small faction, the Spindle Protectorate rely on their extensive research and development programs to maintain their technological edge over other factions in the sector. Who is in charge of these technological advancements, you might ask? Meet Yurika Kusanagi, High Counselor of the Spindle Protectorate. Yurika is the currently elected leader of Spindle and opposes the faction's traditionally isolationist policies, favoring instead to connect with the greater sector and welcoming freelance pilots to Spindle. I thought the elected leader was the CEO, I guess it's the Counselor of Economic Oppression. You can say hi to her, and that's about it, at least in the current version of ScholarTech. As for who you'll actually be interacting with and doing lucrative work for, meet Silvis Renham. While STDF maintains a strictly defensive doctrine, Silvis will happily employ you as an independent contractor once you have built good relations with Spindle. Silvis is a very high importance military and science contact? And you can turn in your acquired blueprints to her. Why would she be interested in those? Well, my friend, let's go deeper. Silvis is the head of ScholarTech's R&D department, a very prestigious position, and has been so for the last few decades. She's the daughter of the scientist who pioneered the wormhole technology used on ScholarTech carriers. We'll get to that in a bit. But wait, she's been the head of R&D for the last few decades? How old is she then? A lot older than you think. So what about her dad? He left to get some milk at the gate they were building. Silvius managed to survive the failed gate experiment, but most of her body didn't. With the help of ScholarTech R&D, Silvius was placed into an artificial body. This is the part where you ask yourself, has science gone too far? This is both deeply unsettling and erotic. This is a dangerous path to walk. Trust me, I've uh, been down it before. Music. ScholarTech really leans into the ambient music, like their full weight. If you don't know Mesotronic, you should. Guy has been doing Star Sector music and sound effects for many years, and you might recognize some of these tunes. If you are a fan of chill, ambient music, that's his specialty, and it fits in very well next to the vanilla Star Sector soundscape. Best described as post-nut clarity. Let's give the ScholarTech soundtrack a quick listen. It's all coming together. The Spindle Protectorate Fleet Doctrine. You see, there are other high-tech factions, but the difference is, the STDF make it look good. Despite being a small faction, the Spindle Protectorate has developed a nice variety of ships. They have a strong focus on mobility and also painfully thin armor. Thematically, this makes a lot of sense given the company's history being in high-tech logistics with only recently adopting a militarized doctrine. Let's take a look at the unique ScholarTech hull mods. The primary 
built in whole mod being Scholar Tech Drives, the faction wide whole mod that predominantly defines Scholar Tech ships. Scholar Tech ships are already quite fast, and with these special drives, they get their zero flux boost enhanced by 10. When their peak performance time runs out, every ship receives a 10% speed boost for a speedy getaway. Or, if you are me, it simply means more power. Due to Scholar Tech engines being highly specialized, the usage of unstable injectors or safety overrides will respectively half or disable these effects. A small boost to engine shielding also reduces engine damage taken by 20%. What does that all really mean? It means you get to go burst. The majority of Scholar Tech's direct combat ships have boosting or other special movement capabilities, allowing them to close the distance with their enemies and perform spectacular flanking maneuvers. Now I did promise to talk about Scholar Tech carriers. All Scholar Tech carriers have the bridge head design built in whole mod. Here's how this works. Instead of fighter bays on the actual ship, there's a stable wormhole that connects the carrier to a planet-side aerospace facility. This reduces the fighter replacement time and decay from losses by 15%. If you don't fully grasp this concept, Scholar Tech are thinking with portals. Instead of massive hangar bays on the ship, the projected wormhole allows instant access to a much better equipped planet-side facility. I quite like this idea. It's smart, it's sci-fi, and they made it look cool. In fact, it even sounds cool. There are some other ships which focus on disabling the enemy rather than mobility. These, we'll talk about later. For the ships that don't have disabling capabilities, that's where the Scholar Tech Solutions weapon lineup really shines. Yo dog, I heard you like EMP weapons, so we put EMP on your EMP, and then we- You get the idea. To get the full Scholar Tech experience, I did my best to only equip my fleet with Scholar Tech weapons. For the most part, Scholar Tech weapons are shorter range and somewhat light on direct damage. Damage, meaning that a Scholar Tech fleet will need to use their mobility and clever positioning to win large fleet battles. If, however, the enemy fleet separates, the isolated targets can quickly be hit with enough EMP to leave them a vegetable. If the enemy fleet chooses to turtle, Scholar Tech ships have the mobility to encircle the enemy and pick off targets one by one with sustained EMP fire. For those that don't know, EMP stands for Electromagnetic Pulse. Without getting into the various types of electric and magnetic disturbances, an electromagnetic pulse system can be militarized and applied to various weapons. These weapons are capable of knocking out communications and electronic systems. In Star Sector terms, it means disabling pieces of enemy ships, fighters, and even missiles mid-flight. When it comes to EMP weapons, Scholar Tech lives and breathes this shit. Let's highlight a few Scholar Tech weapons for demonstration purposes. The Stitch Beam Lance is a large energy weapon that can zap targets at long distance, but certainly pays for the power in flux, and is best employed on backline support ships. The Seam Cannon is a large but short-range energy scatter cannon, great for applying unhealthy amounts of EMP, and best employed on mobile frontline ships. The Crinkle Disruptor is a heavy ion weapon crammed into a small energy mount. With only a range of 400, this weapon has to be used in knife fight range to be effective, but is an extremely powerful weapon when used appropriately. Often mounted on frigates, it's a great strike weapon that can disable a much heavier ship with a couple well-placed shots. A weapon that's unusual by Scholar Tech design, we have the Tausel, a medium weapon and the only ballistic weapon developed by Scholar Tech. It's a long-range kinetic gun that can apply light pressure to enemy shields. And that's about it. It makes a decent support weapon and is something to fire at the enemy before closing the distance, to lay on that thick EMP. The last weapon I'll highlight and my personal favorite energy weapon in the STDF arsenal is the Base Ion Discharger. If you like your water types, you'll be happy to know that this is an amazing bubble beam. The base functions as both a potent EMP weapon and an exceptional point defense flak weapon. It doesn't have the longest range and has a limited amount of charges, but with expanded magazines, you can make a monster of a ship. I'm a big fan of flak weaponry, so the based is based in my book. A quick note on Scholar Tech weapons. The reason I mentioned that I tried my best to equip entirely Scholar Tech weapons is that they are actually quite hard to come by. Both Charka and Jacquard produce a very limited quantity of STDF weapons each month. I found it's actually easier to acquire Scholar Tech ships than it is to acquire enough weapons to outfit them. The good news is that Silvus will regularly offer Nanoforge production of STDF items. So if you are doing a a faction pure playthrough like I am, you'll be going through the STDF drive through more often than you'd like to admit. Can I get a... 
As for Scholar Tech missiles, there are two, excluding built-in weapons, the Tiniola Heavy Torpedo and the Tier Missile. I'll show more of the Tiniola later, but let's talk about the Tear Missile, which you'll be seeing a lot of if you choose to play Scholar Tech. There is a small, medium, and large Tear Missile launcher, so it's easily equipable to any ship. Tier Missiles have good range, decent tracking, and absolutely fry ships like it was treason. Now, putting Tier Missiles on all your Scholar Tech ships is pretty neat, but what if we take it one step further? What if we mounted a tier missile on a fighter. Scholar Tech fighters, they are numerous and they go pew pew. What more could you possibly want? Let me tell you, you want this. The Garter. The lore? We took a tear missile and built a vessel around it. Big brain. You get a carrier, you slap on more garters than those juicy thighs have room for, and look at it go! The Garter then comes back to the carrier, goes through the portal, grabs another tear from their backyard, and shoots it off. Repeat this process until everything is dead. The only downside? Sometimes the garter shoots its load at something unintended, and that's okay, because there's a lot more where that came from. The garter is amazing. I should probably talk about the other fighters as well. There's the heavy attackers, the fiber bomber, and various swarmers. The heavier fighters such as the cord, desus, and stocking actually pack a good punch. When combined, they are very capable of destroying ships that have their point defenses disabled. The fiber bomber is the most expensive wing in the Scholar Tech arsenal. There's five bombers to a wing and they all drop EMP bombs. While not as versatile, they do an excellent job at disabling larger vessels. And finally we have the Thread and Twine Fighters. These are cheap, light fighters that can cause a lot of problems for the enemy. I usually never use Swarmer type fighters, but Scholar Tech has a special ship that synergizes very well with Swarmers. Let's take a closer look at some of these special Scholar Tech vessels and see what this faction is made of. We'll start with the Filament as that was the original ship that the rest of the mod was based off of. Backbone of the STDF military, the Filament is an impressive battle carrier. The first ship to carry a Renham Bergensen device, the technology behind the bridgehead wormhole design. The Filament possesses the armament of a battleship and can support up to four fighter wings. It truly is a remarkable ship and very enjoyable to use. Maintaining such a complex hull certainly takes its toll on supply cost, but when it comes time for combat, you'll be glad you brought it along. What makes the ship extra special though is the ship system, the EMP relay. When enabled, all fighters from the filament will launch EMP arcs at nearby enemies. The more I played the filament, the better I realized this ability was. You can use it to disable enemy ships, win fighter engagements, and even stop large missile barrages if timed well. The EMP relay will do the same amount of EMP damage per fighter, so a higher fighter count means more EMP arcs. Those little swarmer fighters you told yourself you'd never use, it's time for big thinking. But if the filament is the only only ship with an EMP relay, what do the other carriers have? Point Defense Suppression. This system will disable all enemy point defenses on the target ship for roughly two seconds. While it doesn't sound like much, it can be all the time you need to land a few crucial hits. And with the amount of EMP Scholar Tech uses, those few hits will probably disable the rest of the vessel. A simple system, but ever so satisfying. How about this zippy boy you've seen a few times by now? The Skirt Class Frigate. Skirt Skirt is the premium Scholar Tech Super Frigate, possessing a pair of built-in, twin-linked crinkle disruptors, and the overboost system, this little ship can punch far above its weight class. Able to zip in and out of combat easily, it's the ultimate hit-and-run attacker. However, given the shallow flux capacity, more mistakes were made than I'd like to admit. Throw in a couple S mods and two additional crinkle disruptors, and this is a great flagship for an aggressive player. Lobster Ship, also known as the Midi Cruiser. The Midi is one of the strangest and niche role ships Scholar Tech has produced. Its ship system, Magmine Strike, lets it teleport magnetic EMP mines wherever you want in a pretty wide radius. But that's not even the main feature. Its built-in laser can absolutely boil enemy vessels, but it needs to be provoked to do so. The laser will only fire when above a certain flux threshold, making it rather difficult to use. When the laser does fire though, you will know. You can't miss this sound. The laser does have a long cooldown, however, making the MIDI absolutely terrible in a duel. It excels in fleet combat scenarios and is best paired with mac and cheese, baked potatoes, chardonnay, and other frontline ships. How about we combine the best of Scholar Tech weapons, fighters, ship systems, and elegance into a single ship? Yeah, and make it big. The Gown Class Battlestar is the super capital of the STDF, originally a prestige project for Scholar Tech to establish itself as a contending corporation 
preparation for domain military contracts, several Gown class ships were constructed, helping defend Spindle colonies after the collapse. The Gown now stands as a shining beacon of the Spindle system's resilience, and is well regarded as the pinnacle of SCDF engineering. The main body of the Gown comes equipped with the Super Cruise Mode system, allowing the Gown to significantly boost its forward thrust at the cost of weapon range. This allows the Gown to reposition itself quickly and come to the aid of other STDF ships. While the main body might resemble a battleship, the wings of the Gown are what makes it a battle carrier. The Gown is made up of three sections, with each side section housing a wormhole projector system like the filament. In addition to supporting fighter wings, each side section of the Gown also has the ability to warp in mag mines like the MIDI cruiser, giving the Gown an impressive amount of area control. The Gown makes an excellent centerpiece for any large scholar tech fleet and can hold a front line very well. Its balanced design makes it quite versatile and is able to deploy a wide variety of loadouts depending on the captain's playstyle. It looks sexy and it plays well. As for acquiring the gown, there's nothing too complicated. You need to build your reputation with Spindle and check the Charka market regularly. They are quite rare so it might be a while before you see one offered. The first time I ever saw one offered, I saw two. So naturally, I bought both. I shouldn't have to say this but make sure you have enough credits before you think about acquiring a gown. They cost over 2 million a piece and 100 supplies a month to maintain. It's the largest, most expensive ship the STDF has to offer. But what if I told you it wasn't the rarest Scholar Tech ship? To acquire the rarest Scalar Tech ship, one must go on a bit of an adventure and complete the Howling Phantom bounty mission. The STDF lost a battle cruiser, a design from their early Miltech days, and they want the person responsible put to the sword. Hmm, wonder what they mean by that. They don't want the ship back, they just want this person dealt with. Okay, seems easy enough. Good lord, they didn't lose a ship. They lost an armada. Someone, uh... Really fucked up. All right, well, let's get to it, I guess. They have to be hiding in this system somewhere. Here we are. Only heinous traitors and thieves would be hiding in a nebula. Now, I did see that this fleet had a lot of carriers, so what are we dealing with here? Are you kidding? 25 garters? You sick fuck! Well, here we go. Who feels like getting electroshock therapy today? Now, I'm gonna be flying a Satine battle cruiser for this, so I can bubble beam the garters and nope out if I need to. This is a battle in which the EMP relay from the filament will be very useful useful for your fleet, and small swarmer fighters will keep you alive as you can see on screen. Maintaining a strong battle line with plenty of point defense is absolutely required for this mission. Your only real option is to pick off carriers in between garter waves. Luckily, the enemy fleet lacks frontline combat ships, so pushing into the enemy formation shouldn't be too difficult. With clever positioning and fleet movement, we encircle the bounty ship and their remaining forces, but what we really want to know about is this reward ship ship. And here we are, the Silken Banshee. The Silken Banshee is a unique battle cruiser that fits into a heavy missile and fire support role. It did take quite a bit of tinkering and several trial battles before settling on a final refit for this ship. Now some of you veteran Star Sector players are probably thinking, wait a second, I've seen this ship before. And you'd be correct. But where did this ship design come from? Neutrino Core, a classic Star Sector faction mod that unfortunately has not been updated in quite some time. If we scroll down the page, you'll be able to see the original Banshee battlecruiser that the Silken Banshee is based off of. A beloved ship by many old Star Sector players, Tall asked to revive the ship within the Scholar Tech mod, and permission was given. The color scheme and other small adjustments to the base model were made, and so the spirit of the Banshee lives on within Scholar Tech. There is also a very significant overhaul and remake of Neutrino that is close to completion. I'm not going to get into that now, but I'll link the forum thread for you to check out yourself. As for the ship, it utilizes the point defense suppression system like the Scholar Tech carriers, and also supports three large missile mounts. That's a lot of damage. When used appropriately, the Silken Banshee is a terrifying ship on the field. There's another mission by the name of Kimono, where you get to meet Arika. Since I don't want to spoil everything, and I want to get onto the next section, I'll let you figure that one out. Critiques? The Tiniola Distortion Torpedo. Do I hate it? No. In fact, quite the opposite. I love these things like 
like you wouldn't believe. There's something incredibly satisfying about shooting giant barrels of raspberry jam at your enemy. They might be slow, but I think they are adorable. Something about a giant cylinder of a torpedo is so aesthetically pleasing. They even reload slowly over time. I love that shit. So what's the problem? Are they hard to come by? Well, no, not any more difficult than other Scalar Tech weapons, and they can be ordered from Sylvius like anything else. So really, Ironclad, what is the problem? The problem is that these juicy love pods are trapped in a large missile mount. This was so upsetting, I considered dropping the faction. Let me explain. The Terra missile, it has a small, medium, and large missile mount version. It even has a fighter that spams them for you. The Tiniola, there are only two Scalar Tech ships that can even mount it. Can you see where I'm going with this? The Silken Banshee and the Gown. Let me say that another way. You either need the STDF Super Capital or the one-of-a-kind Relic Ship if you want to mount this torpedo without going outside the faction. There is no base STDF frigate, destroyer, cruiser, or capital ship that has a large missile mount. Considering that the large mount launches two of these thick boys, you'd think there would be a medium mount to launch one. The reality is there isn't, and I don't want to live in this reality anymore. This is my only critique of the entire mod. The Scalar Tech Solutions faction mod is well balanced, and I mean that in terms of game balance as well as overall design. The lore is neat, music is great, cool characters, it's very cohesive. There's a good amount of weapon variety and the visuals especially are excellent. I'd say one of the best aspects of Scalar Tech is the visual design of the weapon effects and the ship sprite work. It's an absolute treat for the eyeballs. At this point, I'd consider Scalar Tech Solutions a feature complete faction. It does not feel like anything needs to be changed or added, <laughs> besides the one thing I mentioned. If things do get added, such as the recent planet artwork, which looks awesome by the way, it'd most likely be small enhancements as opposed to significant overhauls. Maybe a super secret ship or two could get added along the way. Who knows? That being said, mods are always subject to change, so we'll see what the future brings for Scalar Tech. If you'd like to try out the Scalar Tech mod, you can find it on the Fractal Softworks forum and is in the mod index. Links in the description. Scalar Tech Solutions is a great faction mod that I'll be including in every campaign. I give it a Scalar Tech out of STDF out of Spindle Protectorate. Thank you, Neotal, for answering all my questions, putting up with silly comments, and creating this awesome faction mod. And big thanks to the Iron Patreon supporters for financially supporting this video. As always, more links in the description of the video, and subscribe if you want to be entertained. I'm Ironclad Lion, and thanks for watching. My next Star Sector mod review? Hard to say, but I could use some coffee. <laughs>